This week's episodes are brought to you by the generous support of Kupro Panda. Hey folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to another episode of our base building game series here in Unity, codenamed Project Porcupine, and we are going to continue our file saving dialogue. Right now, when we do have a map open, oh, this is the first run of the day, it always takes a little bit longer, I'm terribly sorry, I should have done this before starting to record, but we can hit Pathfinding Test, hit Save, we have a dialog box, we can type in some sort of file name, and we can hit OK, and it will save to that file in our folder that we've looked at before. But, oh, now that's interesting, I was about to say, we've got a couple of issues here. First of all, one of the things we want is we want this um, this list to show us the existing files in here. Right now we've just got a placeholder. We did work on the whole scrolling interface last time. You'll also notice when I hit save over here and put in some sort of name, hit OK. Um, there we go. It has to have a different name because we checked for duplication, sort of. I can't scroll right now. Why is that? Well, that's because when we originally wrote our file saving code over here when we hit... Um, when we save, so save dialog OK was clicked. Right here, we hide the window by saying game object active. We do not want to do that. We want to use the close dialog function, which uh, turns off the modal flag, which means that our user interface will once again start to work. Here's where we do the actual saving. You can see here that the file already exists. I should actually, uh, for now, debug.log error, file already exists, just bailing out for now. Actually, no, you know what we're going to do? Um, overwriting the file for now. Because that way it'll make it a little easier to test. I don't have to come up with unique file names every single time. So if the file name already exists, all we do is we print an error in the log. But we keep on going anyway. We close it. We overwrite the file. It's perfectly fine. Okay, so what we want to do is when the dialog gets shown, we want to get a list of files in the save location. So first of all, what is the save location? Well, we know what that is. It is, uh, so um, file path, I guess, is going to be this. We're going to get the world controller dot instance dot file save base path. So we're going to do that. Um, and then we're going to load all the files from there, which means, actually, we should be okay. We should be able to go directory, excellent, dot get files, excellent. It needs a path, which is file path. And then there's actually three variants of this. We're going to use the second option here, which requires a search pattern. We want files, whoops, that match star dot SAV, because that's what we're using as our file extension. So this should give us a list of all those. String um, files equals that. Ba, 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 ba. Yep, that, oh, no, no, this is an array. An array of strings called all, like, I don't know, let's say existing saves. There we go, I like that. Nice and verbose. It's worth noting um, um, that existing saves will contain the full path to the save file. Right, so it doesn't just have the file name, it'll have C colon slash users slash etc. 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 It'll have the whole thing in there for each one. So then we're gonna build a file list by instantiating file list item prefab. Now we have that linked over here, do we? Let's find out if we've got that set up correctly. So in canvas, dialog boxes, whoops. Come on, shrink, dialog boxes, save file. Uh, you know, we don't have the prefab in there now, so if we take a look at the prefab, we've got the file list item, so we're going to put that in there. It is worth noting we could very easily do this without using the file list item prefab. We could generate this programmatically if we wanted to, uh, because it's actually a relatively simple little structure. It's just a game object with another game object inside. The inner game object has a text component on it. The outer one has the dialog list item component. So we could build it programmatically, but we'll use the prefab for now because why not? Okay, so we're, what we want to do is we want to instantiate a whole bunch of these. So we're going to have to, that's one of the problems with using the prefab is right here, we want to do some work, right? We want to do something like uh, for each string um, file in existing saves. All right, we want to loop through each one of those. That's perfectly fine. We want to instantiate one of these, so we can say something like game object geo equals um, just game object dot instantiate, and the original object is simply the file list prefab. Now, two things. First of all, this returns an object, not a game object, so we do have to cast. It always strikes me as a little bit weird, but it's because you can instantiate different things. You don't always instantiate a game object. You can instantiate an object of a different type, and then you can cast it appropriately. There are a few variants of instantiate here, quite a few, including 
And I think this is relatively new, this version of instantiate here that allows you to specify a parent at this point, because we do want to make sure that this is parented to the right thing in our tree. Um, this would also require us to put in the vector and a quaternion, which we could just put in literally whatever, because this object's going to get moved based on... Um, um, well, yeah, there's an advantage here. I was going to say, get, get based moved on the grid. The advantage of setting the parent right away is it should mean that we don't have to worry about resetting a scale, which is kind of a weird thing that happens with dialog with um, GUI stuff. Tell you what, let me instantiate it just the simplest way now. We, then we can go and fix problems as we go. So we instantiate it. We need to make sure, make sure this game object is a child of our list box which is basically what we created. So what is our list box? Well, under file save, we've got dialog background, we've got um, file list background, file list over here, and then it's supposed to have a bunch of file list items in there. We have the placeholder just so that we remember how it's supposed to go, but it's this file list component where we want stuff to go into. I think the best thing to do is for us to set up a link to that public, um, transform doesn't really matter what we use for this. Actually, in a sense, it's like the rec transform, but let's say public transform um, file list like this. And we will just reference. We could find it by name. We could do different things. I think for this, it's going to be a lot better if we just have a hard link to it. There we go. And then we can say game object dot transform dot set parent is set to our file list like that. So let's give this a run and see what it does. Well, maybe we can we could rename some things. In file list item, we know that it has a child called text, but more importantly, it has a child with a text component, which is supposed to be the file name. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So our game object, we're going to get component in children. We're looking for something called text in this game object, and we want to set the text value to be equal to the file name. But not the whole file name, because this file name is the full path. We want the string uh, file name only, which we have to remember. Where where did we go and mess around with this last time? Oh, I remember. In our sprite loader code, if we take a look at that, do, 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 sprite manager over here, we've used functions to manipulate file name paths before. Here's where we combine it, but we can also get just a part of the file name um, from, from where were we doing that? Right over here, get file name without extension, which is fantastic. So this is just the file name itself. You can also get file name. So we've got a full path. So right now, file contains something like C colon slash users slash, you know, some username and then some stuff and then um, project porcupine saves uh, some file name dot sav. Huh? So we've got a couple of options for parsing that out. If we use just path dot get file name, hang on, let me make sure I get the spelling right. I always have to, to refer, refer, <laughs> refer, yes. Um, file returns some file name because uh, the function, the exact spelling of the function, because every language has got something a little bit different. And path dot, the one we're actually going to use, get file name without extension, returns some file name, which is what we're looking for here, because that's what we want to have in the list. So the we don't actually have to save it anywhere. That's going to be fine. We can just say something like path dot get file name without extension on our file over here. So we're going to set that text so it'll show up properly in the list. And let's go and give this a run. This, I don't believe, will be quite right. But let's see what happens if we do this, assuming there's no syntax errors. Nope, we're good there. Hit play. Hit save. Hey, there's all my files. Shit, that works surprisingly well. And if I click my file, one, two, three. Ah, right, right, right. So my file, one, two, three or whatever it is, when I click on one of these file list items, we've got we've got a specific script here. When this gets clicked on, what it's supposed to do, we can open this up to take a look, it's supposed to take its text and stuff it in the input text field. So again, if we look over here and hit save, this text field over here, when we click, this is supposed to get inserted into there. 
we also clearly have to make a few changes over here. Specifically, when we, hit, when we close the dialog box, it should cleanse that box. But it's saying, object reference not set to instance of an object. Why is that? Well, it's trying to get a reference to the input field dot text. But that's empty by default. If we look, come on, go back over here. Our dummy one, which we had set up initially, over here, it's got a link to the input text file. But our ones that we spawn doesn't, so we have to make sure that gets filled in, which we can do. Our file save controller over here, we can grab. So um, our new game object has a component on it itself, which is the dialog list item. And it has this input field that we can set to it. And we don't actually have a reference to it here. Um, but right here instead. So we need to keep a reference to this around. I mean, we could keep it globally, but it's going to be OK. Um, something like, like this. Mm, whoops. Input field is equal to that. Um, our save dialog has an input field, which the um, file list items fill out for us when we click on them. So we just need that reference, and then we can just go and assign it over there. There we go. I mean, so we could do this in the start. This is not, it's not super slow in operation. It's not like it's running every frame, so it's perfectly fine. So now let's give that a try. We have to stop, hit play. Pathfinding test just to have something. I mean, we could save an empty world as well. So if I click on my file one, two, three, it puts my file one, two, three over there. And if I hit OK, we will overwrite. See that file already exists overwriting the file for now, which is perfectly fine. In fact, is exactly what we want to do here. Now, You'll notice if I keep hitting save, this dialog box is getting fuller and fuller and fuller. And that's because when we close the window, we don't clean out the list. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to override. We're already overriding the show dialog box one. We want to over also override the close dialog box version over here. And we'll want to call the base version as well base.close dialog, which is responsible for hiding things. But perhaps before we do that, um, clear out all the children, children of our file list. So we want to do something like while um, file list dot child count is greater than zero. We want to say file list dot get child uh, zero, get the first one. So we're going to grab a copy of that. Transform C is equal to this. We're going to get the first child. And what we really want to do is we want to destroy the the child dot game object. But as I've said before, this will result in an infinite loop. And the reason is the children actually only get destroyed at the end of the frame, whereas this is all running within, say, one update. So we flag the child to get destroyed, but doesn't actually get destroyed until all this finishes running. So this is going to return true forever because the child count is always going to be above zero. So what we also have to do, in addition to flagging it to be destroyed, we also have to say set parent null. And then, of course, we have to make our own joke, become Batman. So there we go. So now it's removed from the list of the children over here. So even though it's not quite destroyed yet, it doesn't count as one of the children. So this will eventually count down to being zero and that will clear out. So now if we hit play, since it's done rendering, and just make something there, save, cancel, save, cancel. Now the list stays perfectly clean. Now it was looking like it might look a little dumb once it gets overcrowded. Oh yeah, it saves the old value as well, which is probably okay. So by default, it remembers, because we don't clear this out, we could clear this out. During the file close, we could clear out the, um, uh, the uh, what's it called? The input box, right? What are we actually calling it? The input field. Could clear out the input field here. But I think it makes sense to leave the old file name in there to make overriding easier. See, I don't know. On the other hand, you know, does it lead to more disasters? Um, 
Alternatively, we could either, well, A, clear out the text box, or B, um, append an incremental number to it so that it automatically does something does something like some file name you know 13 or something like that which would be handy we'll leave that as a to do for later because right now we are functioning so that's going to be fine um, and yeah I want to make sure like if I keep um, hello there we go oh yeah it re recompiled over there if I keep filling this in, I mean, I guess I can make a bunch of dummy things. Does it keep looking kind of relatively sane if this list gets really, really big? I can make this these duplicates pretty easily in the other list. There we go. So now it starts scrolling. And yeah, it looks okay. I don't know why it wasn't looking properly before. It must have been the way that it generated the list. I think that looks okay. Now, right now, we're getting this stuff in alphabetically. Also, I think it needs a little bit of padding over here. In our file list, and again, we still have the one dummy one in there, which we're going to have to remove, obviously, at some point, but for now, it's okay. The one dummy one over here, which is... Oh, no, we don't have a dummy one anymore. My bad. So let's just drop one in there. I guess I, I did clean it out. Let's drop one in there over here. What I think we're going to do for our text box, we're going to leave, leave a little bit of padding on the left, and that will be sufficient. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that change. Oops, we are running. That's what's going on here. That explains everything. Oh, by applying it, it saved it in the prefab list, so it kept it good. So now if we hit play, hit save, yeah, see, that looks a little bit better. So we can make some other tweaks. Um, is there any, there was something else I feel I was going to tweak. Wait, right, right, right now we're getting this alphabetically, which is fine, except that's not usually how you want to access these save files. Normally, we're going to want this sorted by date. I think what I'm going to do, because this is getting a wee bit long, I'm going to put in a little note here. Um, -da 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 -da. to do, make sure the saves are sorted by date slash time with the newest <clears throat> saves being at the top. I want to make sure that our load file is working properly because right now we don't, we don't have a, a load dialog at all. When you hit load, it's still trying to load from the, um, uh, from, from the user prefs file, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to du duplicate the save file dialog box. It's really going to be quite similar to the point, like maybe there's a way to, to generalize it. Probably there is. But for now, since there's only two, two dialog boxes, I think it's okay for us to just go ahead and make a duplicate. So this is the load file dialog box, which is going to have a slightly different name, load file. But otherwise, it's going to be the same. It's going to have a list of files. It's going to have an OK and cancel. It's going to have a file name over here. Everything is good. We are going to make two other changes, though. We are going to make the we're going to make a duplicate of the file save controller. Call this the file load controller. Open this up and file load controller. Show dialog. Show dialog. When we show the dialog, we still load everything, all the existing files, so that you can pick one. And close dialog, we clean that up, <clears throat> that's fine. We should probably rename this one to uh, load dialog, okay was clicked. Or maybe just, you know what, okay was clicked is how I'm going to rename this. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with the other one over here. Uh, save file dialog. We're going to rename this to okay was clicked. We'll have to rewire the buttons, but that's fine. I think that's a much, much less cumbersome name. So what happens? We don't have to check because we're not doing overriding. I can get rid of this note. We still get the file name. Uh, we could check for validity, but I don't think it really matters. I mean, one of the things is we may not want the user to be able to type in the text. We could make the text box read only or, you know, who cares, right? We're going to try to load that in. We're doing this. File exists. We could throw an error if it doesn't exist for some reason. Um, if, it, if it doesn't exist... File doesn't exist. What? So probably the user clicked something weird. So we're just, we are just going to go ahead and return. Probably, uh, oops, close the dialog box and return. That's fine. And then we're going to call load world over here from a string. Boom. From the load dialog box. 
So again, when you're doing this kind of copy and paste, it's a good sign that you can probably go and generalize something. Some of these things maybe can get moved up into, so we've got a parent, we've got a dialog box controller. We may want a dialog box, we may want something that's the file load save controller that both load and save to send from, and then just do a couple little tweaks. Uh, we can consider that for later on, but for now we're, we're gonna be fine. So we find the file, we do that, we say load world, load world was clicked. And now what we have to do is look into our old load code, which is still in the world controller over here. Shooka, 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 get my list. Load world over here. Right. Right. Okay, this is actually going to be a pretty significant set of changes. I forgot about that. Because what we did was we implemented this sort of this funny kind of hack where when load world runs, what we actually do is just set a flag and then tell the scene to reload. And when the world instantiates itself, because this is a good way to just clear the world, make sure everything gets reset. But then when the real world instantiates itself over here with on enable, we check to see if the load world flag is set. If so, we run create world from save file. So what do we need to change to make this happen? Well, I think load world, which is a public, that's fine. I think it needs to accept a string here called file name. And I think this um, this boolean we could probably change it to be a string. Load world from file have it default to be null. And if load world from file is not equal to null, then what we do is we create world from save file and then reset this back to null. That's going to be fine. So then what kind of changes happen? Well, if we go to declaration over here, instead of reading the string from the save game. Instead, we read, whoops, from the file. We'll make it in two steps just to make it exp explicit. This is the um, load or the, the, the save game text, right? File dot get, uh, what's it called? Read all text because it's XML. So that's going to be fine. And we're going to read it from the file called, uh, right, load load world, which we probably will want to rename. Uh, no, sorry. Load world from file. There you go. From this. So we're going to read this file in here, which at this point we assume is a file that really exists. This could, of course, throw an exception. This can throw an exception to do uh, show a error message to the user. Right, because right now all that will happen, this will throw an exception, it'll fail, and then Unity will just exit this particular execution of this line of code. I mean, the program will keep running, but it won't have actually loaded anything, which is fine. But there we go. So then what we're going to do is we're going to read this, the save game text. And then that's that. So the only thing that has to change is this load world. We have to call it right. So, oh, right, load world is not a thing anymore. It's load world from file which is going to be set to this file name over here. So we have to call load world correctly, which is going to be from our file load controller. So what we're going to do is we don't have to do any of this loading text at all. No. All we're saying at this point is, I'm going to fix that little indentation. We're saying world controller dot instance dot load world, which needs a file name, which is our file path. Like so. So we're doing this, we're adding the base path, we're adding dot save, we're passing it to load world, which really doesn't have to exist. It could just run this one directly, but you know, maybe we'll want to do something else. That's going to be okay. I think that's fine. So now what we have to do is we have to rewire a couple of things because I renamed um, one of the functions. So over here, when we click OK, to say this is broken. This is our old save file one. We have to say save file controller because it's called OK was clicked instead of the old big ass name. So OK was clicked has got renamed there, but otherwise it's fine. And load file over here doesn't have a file save controller. It has a file load controller, but it still wants a link to its file list, which is here. 
and a list of the prefab, which is there, that's fine. And we have to make sure the buttons are pointing to the right thing. It's pointing to load file, file load controller, OK was clicked. And the cancel button points to the load file. And file load controller, we want to say close dialog at that point. And I think that's OK. So then we can go and hide this. And then our load button, which is top menu, load button over here. Actually, we'll make sure the save button, there, that's good. So the load button has to be changed to point to our load dialog. And it runs um, show dialog. There we go. So now let's say we hit play. And let's actually get a little world so that we know that we're in the right one. So we're going to build oxygen controller, mining drone, and I'll make a stockpile setup that looks like a plus over here. Good. So then I'm going to hit save. I'm going to call this one uh, AAA test save one. So it's at the top of the list until we get it sorted properly. And then, I don't know why it's spamming the path A star and why you move to the stockpile. Must be trying to dump some stuff, or I think it just did dump some stuff, and now it's like not finding anything. We're going to have to take a look at what's generating that mess exactly. So now if I go say new world, just blank everything out, hit load, AA test save one, OK. Hey, it's working! Every time we load a save, we still have the code where it spawns a bunch. Oh, that's what was being brought over here, the mining drone. Oh, then the mining drone stops working. It should start working again. And clearly, we have to go and double check that. I think it stopped working because this tile was... Oh, because no one's working on it. These guys keep grabbing the jobs to bring things to the stockpile. We got a little bit of a glitch in our, uh, in our stockpile job. They're just stuck on doing this and they never do anything. I think they're trying to pick up stuff from the tile itself. I think they keep picking these up and then putting them down. That's why we're getting spammed with the return length of one. They just keep picking up this stuff and putting it down. So they never grab this. They never go back to working the old jobs. Oh, we found the bug. Hey, hey, but more importantly, the load worked. If I try to load a different scene, say this one over here, there it is. And go back to the test save one. There it is again. So ignoring the, the bug with the, uh, the job of collecting stuff over here, we're good. And that bug is not related to the saving system. So fantastic. Look at this. We got, we got an opportunity to actually talk about how to make scrolling dialog lists, which is always a nice thing to do. And we've got file saving and loading to actual files on your hard drive. Hashtag PC Master Race. Who needs one or, say, three save slots? We have infinite slots. Obviously, at a certain point, if the file, if that uh, directory literally gets super big, it might take a while to read that all in and sort it and to present it in the file list. But that's, you know, that's a whole other thing altogether. Thank you very much for watching another tutorial. Uh, next episode... I'll probably look at whacking at these bugs over here. And if I remember, which I may not remember next time until I start saving and loading again, we're going to want to sort this based on age, which is going to be a really easy thing to do. So, But it wouldn't surprise me if the next episode was a little bit of sort of bug fixing and just, you know, cleaning things up around the edges over here to make this work a little bit better. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. I didn't realize this whole time my screen was clipped. I wonder if that caused any problems. <gasps> I hope not. Yeah, my monitor capture was set to a smaller size here. Um, which, oh, I'm terribly sorry, all y'all. I'm terribly sorry. I'm going to have to check, make sure I was never doing anything that was slightly off screen. I hope I wasn't. I think it was just looking stupid. Hopefully I wasn't doing anything that was clipped off screen, because otherwise I'm going to have to record this whole thing again. Arg. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone who continues to make Project Porcupine a reality by supporting us on Patreon. You guys are supporting us through August and early September and including these mic check supporters, we've got Drazion, Jan Torivel, Julian Auger Lafon, Craig Mortel, Neil Blakey Milner, Ole Peter Talgo, Wes Oldenboving, Kale the Quick, Valiant Cake Fiend, Aaron Toivison, Michael McClintock, Marius Fieldvold, Speedy Savant, Jason Yanity, Adjective, Steven Steger, Kupro Panda, Yuko Finn, and absolutely everyone who's watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed these videos. I appreciate you very, very much.